Very nice trucks you have there, young sir. Bonk. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> Bonk. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh, this is the age we're at now. Oh, bonk. <laughs> ba bonk. Oh, bonk. <laughs> bonk. Bonk. Yes, that bonk. is the small Galenda 2 or the Galenda uh, from RC Four Wheel Drive that we unboxed. He has claimed it as his own, and there has been many sessions of demolition with it. <laughs> his two favorite trucks, right here. Well, two of his favorite, I guess. Amazing. That truck. And that truck. And that truck. And that black truck. And that red truck. Chuck. Good job. Chuck. I love it. Chuck. Chuck. Look. Look. Chuck. <laughs> Look. That's brilliant. Look, Daddy. I'm looking, buddy. I'm super impressed. I guess you are retiring. Yep, I'm done. Check, Daddy. Yes? Ah, welcome back, my friends. Check it out. Lots of color at the RC Sparks Ranch. The rain has been falling. And we have been planning some fifth scale races for quite some time. But uh, at the time of this filming, being the uh, beginning of July, June is always a rainy season. So lots of color. Everything has to dry out. It's all growing wonderfully now. Check it out. With rain becomes opportunity to play in the mud. So the center channel I have here that always collects all the rainwater running down from the shop area collects all the way down and makes a great mud pit. And with mud pit comes a scale RC truck, of course. This is an updated Vatera I have. It's actually an RTR or a ready to run version that I went out, purchased from a local hobby shop here in Calgary called Action Hobby. I also uh, bought some tires and rims. Those are 1.9 mud slingers on Intigy rims. Very mall crawler-esque, but regardless, we're going to be putting them in the mud today. Uh, 1.9s, uh, as I mentioned, with the mud slinger, because I wanted a smaller, more scale tire, I wanted to see how this truck does on a smaller 1.9 size uh, and leave my other one already set up on the 2.2s, which is, you know, something I prefer, especially when I'm doing lots of crawling. Now, a lot of people will be asking me, why didn't I go out and get one of the kits that are available? And really, just because it's a busy season for me right now, normally I do a lot of my building in the winter times. Uh, I just wanted to get out and have some fun, you know, and hey, building kits is fun too, but I wanted to get out and enjoy the sun. So here we are, an updated Vatera truck. Uh, they are releasing a new Vatera truck uh, coming up here. It's actually really, really cool. And uh, you can see some pictures and stuff of it online. It's a yellow truck. It's very, very cool. Uh, anyway, Anyway, guys, I don't want to talk anymore. I want to get into the mud. <laughs> Let's do it. So everything in this truck is waterproof, the ESC and the servo. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is that the servo that comes with it is kind of slow, right? It turns, but it's got some pretty good torque. You can see that here, it's on dry ground. And with mud slingers, having that much traction, turning it like that, not too bad up and over. The flex on this truck is fantastic. I actually showed a static shot on my Instagram of this truck uh, flexing with, with the front axle uh, tipped one direction and of course the back tires all flat on the ground. I'll leave a link to my Instagram in the video description box down below. The Alberta dirt is like a mix of sand and clay and soil so it's a very unique wet thick sticky heavy compound uh, that can really be tough on bigger pinions on the motors and you guys might be wondering why is it kind of tilting to one side it's really because the middle is way softer than the outside of this channel here there we go kind of line it up looks like I should have put on a snorkel <laughs> You can hear the water under the hood. <laughs> I still have traction on the bottom though. For now. Doing good, doing good. It's not coming in the driver window yet. 
I do get quite a few questions about waterproofing um, my lipos or do you need to waterproof your battery and really lithium polymer batteries they can be very very dangerous if mishandled or misused and some would think that putting them underwater would fall into that category and that may be the case uh, but lipo batteries actually have to be sealed against any air contact so they are usually already sealed against water right because no air no water the one thing that you have to be careful of are those balance plugs the white plugs that are attached to the lipos and of course uh, the connectors themselves the battery connectors they will start to show signs of corrosion depending on the ones you're using and if you're if you're in salt water you cannot take a truck into it's just salt water conducts way too much electricity uh, and of course that's a whole different episode about motors and salt water and all that but with lipos uh, basically a lipo can get wet you will be degrading the the warranty of course I'm sure most manufacturers won't warranty a lipo that's in water uh, and always dry off the balance port uh, when you take the lipo out just just so it prevents uh, any issues with, with you charging in the future Another question I get is about waterproofing and do I have to waterproof uh, your axles and bearings? And the answer is, is if you take a stock truck or even a, a, a customized truck that you've done, depending on the mods, your bearings are always going to be getting dirt and mud uh, in with the axles. Look at that, so soupy over there, come on! See if I can back out. Straighten out those tires. So you always have to basically remove, if you're gonna go in mud and water, you, you have to take your axles apart, you know, at least every couple of runs. Make sure you don't have any sand and grit in there because they're bearing killers. And one day you go out, you go to use your truck and boom, it's squeaky, it's irritating, or it just simply doesn't work because it's frozen. Same thing will happen with your motors if you don't clean them out properly with a compressor and use some sort of motor cleaner, right? Or some motor uh, specific bearing oil. So that's another tip I hope that can help some of you guys out there motor oil uh, motor bearing oil is, is fairly inexpensive you can get them at most hobby shops let's go back to this mud where we got stuck I want to see more of that <laughs> I'm not even at full throttle I'm just doing a gentle curve ah there we go <laughs> I needed a snorkel there but thankfully it's electric maybe when we see the rise of full-scale electric cars we won't really need a snorkel kit anymore oh man nope yep oh almost come on come on yes Mudslinger, <laughs> and that's on a 2S LiPo. So that's good, I'm glad I had enough power to pull through there. The motor probably isn't very hot, but it has quite a bit of dirt in it. So I'm gonna go and rinse it out. You wanna come see the new truck, buddy? Yeah, it was dripping when I walked up, it was all the mud. Let's put it in the sun. Yeah, well I gotta rinse it off first. Yeah, I gotta clean it with the hose, that's right. It was only as easy to clean a full scale that way and as cheap. <laughs> All right, so lined up nose to nose, 2.2 size tires on the right hand side, 1.9s on the left hand side, and you can see there's not much of a height difference and you may be wondering why. The tire is bigger, what's going on? Well really it depends on how you have your suspension set up too. If you've got the, the, the spring heighteners, higher or lower that'll bring the nose or the rear of the truck uh, up and down now really it's clearance and you can see in the rock pile in the background there that i have given uh, the 2.2s their fair run and i'd like to take the 1.9s over there now now that all the mud is rinsed out and uh, see how they do just in some light rock crawling this place seems to be a good a start as any Let's see if we can do a slow crawl with these mud slingers here. Gonna have to watch my big bumper doesn't get hung up on the rock cliff right away. Bit of clearance, here we go, back bumper scrapage. Mm, 
not too bad. The right hand tire trying to hook up with some traction, turning my tires, driving the rock. There we are. Not bad, hung up on the back link. That's okay though. Small controlled uh, pushes of the throttle. You don't wanna be jumping your truck too far, right? You wanna make sure that when it does hook up, you're not flying way too far forward. This is a very skinny rock designed to drop down your front tires right now. Oh, the diff clears nicely. So right now it's resting on the differential. Let's have a look. Stack of pallets in the back to be burned on the weekends. So stuck right there, very wide at the back of the rock, and of course it comes to a point. Very nice, I'm liking these tires. Look at that, it's a nice bumper anchor but it's actually holding me from falling off the rock in the front here, even though I've got quite a bit of room to drive out of it. Still, it was nice to kind of grab me and act as a drag brake, physical drag brake. Perfect. Well, I'm gonna try and drive the tire up here and get up here. Let's see if that works. So first that one, then the other side. Yeah, too many holes, I think. We can get it to hook up on that other rock. Oh yes! Okay, <laughs> changing angles. That was a good one. The back right tire is still left in a hole. Hopefully I can climb up here. I'm turning right and left. Yes, man, good crawl. Lots of shadows today, nice and warm, very humid. <laughs> so we're onto a side hill now. Very nice, drop it down, getting ready for the valley. Now the valley I'm about to drop into is known that if you don't actually ride your tires on the edges of each one, you can go in sideways and you're done. Oh, looks like I didn't quite get it. Yes, I did, perfect. Driving into it, thinking about where my back tires will be placed. Oh, got a bit of strain, there we go. Don't want to scratch my fender. Beautiful, beautiful. So there you go, mud, rocks, and tips and tricks. I hope it's been a good video for you guys. Go out and get yourself one of these cool trucks. Find some friends, go out, take some pictures, take some videos, post them up. Be a part of a really neat community. And uh, you know, if the video's inspired you to do that, please give it a thumbs up down below and maybe we've even earned your subscription. And if you are subscribed, thanks for all the support. Check that out. It looks so boss. I love the old Chevys. Okay guys, until next time, get outside, have some fun with RC, bye.